Hi guys, this is Pat O'Day from Battleground Models. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how you can use the Battleground conversion kit to turn a die-cast 118 Maisto 1951 Volkswagen into a World War II wartime Volkswagen KDF, or also known as the People's Tank. So let's get right to it. First, we'll take a look at the basics of the kit itself. You'll notice when you choose your kit that you can pick from the four-wheel drive tread pattern for off-road, the standard military tire pattern, or famous uh, mostly used in the desert balloon pattern wheel. So we're going to work with the standard tread pattern today. Um, with the kit, you get four standard rims, two front and two rear, and you also get a spare tire rim for putting under the, the bonnet, so to speak. To attach the tires to the rims, it's very easy. You just take the tire and give it a little push. Careful when you're pushing in not to hit the valve stem is uh, fragile. Once you have the tire popped all the way in there, you're, you're basically done. You're ready to attach it to the vehicle. Um, you also receive a front horn, signal horn. You can see the detail on there is quite, quite good. Front and rear Notex. work on the focus there. The uh, front and rear license plates. The Wehrmacht style. Two headlamp covers. These are meant to be the leather cover that's stretched over the existing lamp glass. And the lift kit for the suspension. And this basically replaces the Maisto suspension with a static suspension that lifts the car far enough off the ground to resemble the four-wheel drive suspension that the KDF use in most cases. Uh, it also allows you to fit, uh, even in the two-wheel drive application, these allow you to, of course, fit the modified wheels and tires. So the big question is, how do you get from this boxed Maisto 1951 Volkswagen in 1 18th scale to this uh, fairly military looking KDF version. So if we take a quick look underneath, you'll see I painted them black, but you have the suspension kit here basically the same one that uh, they, oops, the gas can just fell out. Uh, this is an earlier version. I create a little bit of an inset there. So your kit will actually look more like this one. Pop that on. And then of course you have the front or the rear left and right pieces that go there. So on the factory version, go ahead and pop it out of the box here. So you'll want to uh, keep all the screws that come out during this process. We won't reuse the ones that hold it to the plate. You, of course, could mount your KDF to the plate, maybe change the sticker. It has a nice display piece that those screws are still intact on the conversion one, as you can see, although I've shaved them off and filled them in a little bit there. Um, 
So if you look here on the bottom of the Maisto version, you'll see you've got screws. We'll get this tape out of the way. So you basically got six screws that you have to deal with. You've got one, two, three here, one, two, three there. So let's do the front first. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you this sort of in two different ways. One will be the quick and dirty if you just wanna understand how to get the suspension <clears throat> from the kit together and you're comfortable with doing the modeling aspect uh, on your own. I'll show you that. But I also wanted to show those of you who maybe aren't comfortable with doing the modeling work that this is actually a decent project if you want to um, learn how a lot of that goes. The Maisto, the way they put the Volkswagen together, it's almost as if they had in mind making other versions of it themselves or uh, potentially for the modeling community, although I don't think that's probably the case, but it, it certainly worked out pretty well. So that's all the, the key pieces there. I believe that's all the screws that we need to pop out. So if we gently make sure to hold the bottom, turn the car over, and kind of grab, uh, I guess we can pull the pieces off individually like that. But what I was going to try to do, ideally, was just pull the whole kind of car out. So there you go. We're going to put that over there. We now have uh, the entire underneath, a little casualty there. We don't need a spare tire or wheel, so we're just going to toss those over here. Um, this slides right out, which is great. Uh, so that for those of you that are going to be modeling this, um, you can choose a variety of colors. I, I'm going to be uh, probably shamed on the forums about not knowing exactly which colors were accurate for the KDF for different versions. But uh, in my mind, I believe I've seen through the research at least black and tan. Uh, on this version, I chose to leave the interior tan so I didn't have to do much painting. But I also went ahead and painted the interiors of the doors and some of the other things that weren't tan. Uh, I guess they were tan to match. I remember doing a little bit of painting on the inside, but. It was probably just going over with a, going over it with a coat of black. Oh, that's what it was. Um, I remember now. These seats come out fairly easily, so if you just pinch them down, they pop right out. So what I did is I actually left the seats, front and rear seats, um, the tan color. These are just plugs that come out. But I painted the uh, floorboards and everything black. So I've got a nice black and tan interior there. So basically that means you would just remove these seats, paint this tray black, flat black, and you're good to go. Um, the other thing that I did from a modeling perspective is I, I, when I removed the pieces of this off of the frame, I painted everything that's green, black, uh, and that's why you've got a nice black color here. You can also see on the underside, it's all uh, nice and black. So it's, it's basically just black and tan the whole way through. I think that would work. Um, certainly, uh, you can do your own research and figure out what other options there might be. So now, as far as getting the suspension kit attached, you'll see we've got two more screws here. So make sure not to lose those. Those become important later. <clears throat> there we go. So now this whole mechanism will come out here. Uh, if you don't use the video, I would definitely take a few pictures as you uh, take this apart, just so it's easier to remember how it all goes back together. It's not, it's not too terribly bad. I 
as I struggle away here. There we go. Like that. So the front is already essentially ready to go. All right. That just pops right off. So I'm going to clean up just a little bit here, get some of these things out of the way. A lot of things we will not end up reusing. Those are going to go over here just so you're not confused when you have extra parts. This is all bad when you put something back together and you have extra parts. And then everything we're going to keep. Just going to put this little bucket over here. All right, so back to this body. Um, you take the up lift kit piece, and you'll see that this oval pill-shaped piece will fit in that pill-shaped hole right there. And if you turn it over, you grab one of the silver flathead screws. So whatever, whatever kind of screw has sort of this washer already built into it, you want that one. And we'll screw that right in. And now, for all intents and purposes, that piece, the front suspension, is repeated on the other side. It's good to go. For the rear, um, I've already broken one of these off, but you'll want to snap off this little peg here, and you'll see if you just pull it to the side, it pops right off. And then you take the other suspension piece, and uh, I actually switched this out, so this is one of the ones that has the inset on it, just like what you'll receive if you decide you want to try this kit out. Uh, put that in there, and then take any one of these black screws, they're all basically the same. Put it in there, screw it right back in place. And now you have the front, and you'll notice that it actually does have a bit of degree of turn. So if you want to pose your car uh, with some turn going on, you have a little bit of freedom to do that. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. And then again, you just put the wheels on the front there. Um, while you have the kit completely taken apart, again, like I said, I, I painted mine, I primed it, and then I painted this flat black. Um, if you look at the rest of the car, this is a great time to go ahead and paint the body, if that's what you're going to do. So you'll notice that uh, these plastic pieces actually just slip right out, the clear plastic pieces, which if you're trying to paint this, is a hugely immense relief. Uh, you don't have to do any masking. So you just can unscrew the windshield or the, the dashboard there, and then the glass comes right out of there as well. So you're good to go. Um, the headlights pop out if you give them a good push. Uh, they will come right out. And these brake covers, and I want to thank Slade over at Small Scale Forums for pointing out that these were not on the wartime Volkswagens. Basically, you just give those a little push. There we go. A little pop from the inside to the out and those come out and uh, so you putty that over because that should be flush just place the headlight cover over the light like that glue it in place and you can actually see the headlight through there 
You can uh, take these out and paint this with those removed, or you can mask it off, whatever your preference. But that's basically all um, you have to do, other than just prime and paint the body. I use automotive primer from Krylon. It works pretty well. Uh, a lot of German wartime paint was a rust, red rust color underneath. So if you can find their rusty red primer, that would be a good one to go with. So how do we get the lower suspension all back together? Well, now that we have the pieces attached there, all you really want to do is go in reverse of what you did before. Pop that back in. Slide that back in there. So the hardest part, and it's not really super difficult, but the hardest part is um, getting the engine sort of back in there the way that it came. Uh, if you just slip it, slip it underneath there, make sure you have that screw hole still clear. I'm gonna take this exhaust system. There are little holes right there. You can slip that right back in there, and you'll see that that comes right over the screw cover piece there. And then you've got, you know, if we use that, nope. Yeah, so you're trying to get it to look like this. Oops, there went the note tech light. Um, trying to get it to look like that. Actually, we'll use that as a lesson. We'll have this as our, our reference picture here. So we don't use this piece. But we do use this. Just slip that back underneath there. And uh, there you go. For all intents and purposes. Pop the screw back in. That's the front end, and or the rear end. And the front end, you don't do anything different. So if you wanted, assuming you put the windshields back in after you're done painting, we're going to bypass that piece. You basically just put the car back on. Line up the holes. Put each of these screws back in. We'll do one, just do one or two, just to get it basically summit and you're good to go. So just for entertainment value, um, we'll go ahead and put another tire on. These, uh, you might put a bead of uh, super glue around. You don't want to put too much because it'll end up getting on the outside of the tire when you push it through. Um, some of you may have different techniques to do that, but a little bit of super glue, in my experience, goes a long way. few other details to take note of um, the horn itself. You'll find that it tucks right in there on the front. So again, before you prime the vehicle, uh, you can glue it in there with some super glue. I would recommend maybe even sanding off or scratching off a little bit of the paint so that you get a good contact between the plastic mount and the paint there. And uh, the NoTech light, same deal. It sits right up here on the fender, but what you'll want to do is sand a little bit of the paint off there until you get to the metal. That way you're gluing this plastic directly to the metal and you'll get a good hold there. The front license plate has a little bit of a lip 
on it, so it's meant to actually slip right over the existing license plate there. Like that. And the rear license plate, uh, I could have done this while I had the car apart. But the rear license plate, there are there's a little, little clip there. If you push in on the clip, the plate comes out, and we take the replacement plate, and there's a tab there. And it fits right in. So we're good to go. Uh, the rear no tech, I've seen it mounted in different places, but you could easily just glue it right above the, the tail light cover there. Just stand it on there and glue it again again before you prime and paint it. Um, some of you have noticed that the this version has some nice decals on it, both the license plates and uh, the door markings, etc. These are from Petting House, and Petting House makes a sheet of 1 16th scale decals. Sorry, we had a bit of a cat burglary there. Uh, 1 16th decals. They are 1 16th scale, not 1 18th, but as you can see, they fit. Uh, they're quite, quite good size for the purposes we have them used for here. But anyway, um, that's the story. I need to fix my no tech that I broke off, so I'm going to hop off the video right now and take care of that. But uh, if you have any questions, please visit the website and contact us there or you can post a uh, reply below and we'll help you figure out how to get your kit put together if there was something we left out.